You're in a good place now. Relax, breathe, smile. You've entered into your element, the home of origin, the home of intelligence and beauty, where relevant topics are discussed, where what you think counts, and where superior is the norm. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Tonight's show, we're talking about marriage and affairs. What goes on behind closed doors? I always think it's interesting when we talk about marriage and affairs because, you know, a lot of times people wonder, why do people have affairs? You know, what's the reason behind it? How do people get caught up in the whole lifestyle of being married and sleeping around? Is it emotional? Is it sex? Why are they there? Why are they doing it? So tonight, sir, we're going to be talking about why people have an affairs, because I think that's important to discuss, about the reasons for that, but as well as who do married couples have affairs with, which I think is very important as well, because we can understand even more, as well as the fact of what happens if you get caught, or better yet, what happens if you actually fall in love with that person? Mm, very dun, dun, dun. Marriage and affairs. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> so what happens when you know people have an affair? Why do people have affairs when they're married? I mean, why? And I think the first thing that comes to everybody's mind immediately is that they're missing something from the spouse. That the spouse must not be doing something right. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is sex, right? I mean, Bill, yeah. is sex the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, all all the uh, uh, women that I have known who have had significant others cheat on them, uh, their first thought is, uh, "Well, it's me. It's because I'm not, uh, you know, putting out for him, or, or I'm uh, I'm not giving him something, you know, that, that he wants." In other words, the the women tend to blame themselves. Oh, but did they first. take back sex though? Too? I mean, was the sex really good and going and going strong? And then all of a sudden, like you know, year five in the marriage, it starts dying off, and they stop giving it less. They start giving it less and less, and then the husband's out there looking for it. Uh, you know, sometimes yes, sometimes not. So sometimes it's just a horn dog that wants to get a lot more sex. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and and I want my cake, I want to eat it too, and I want the plate, and I want all the icing. Well, and and and, and this might be jumping ahead, Ashley, but uh, you know, uh, uh, people's reasons for getting married nowadays, uh, you know, is uh, I think a lot of people jump into marriages too soon in the first place because uh, they found the sex partner that they you know want to spend the rest of their lives with. Well, eventually, you know, the the uh, uh, high, if you will of uh, sex with that person is going to wear off. Well, it will. And and, and then what do you do? I mean, you've you've got to have a basis for a relationship uh, underneath it. Well, really, everybody's going to wear off on the sex thing. Yeah. I mean, it just is going to happen. You're right. You're right on the money on that one, Bill, because, you know, no matter who it is, I mean, because the best sex out there is the person that you're least good with. Okay, I'll be honest with you. It's the best sex you'll ever have, and I think everybody listening tonight knows exactly what I'm talking about. Think about that one person. That you had the best sex with, but you would have killed each other if you would have gotten married. Killed each right. other. Strangled each other on year one. Done deal. Uh, not not even year one. It was a double suicide murder. We don't know. <laughs> you know. But the sex must have been the, really the, good. The Wars of the Roses. You don't remember that movie with uh, oh, yeah. uh, Michael Douglas and... Uh, uh, a movie I actually watched. That movie was kind of funky, though. It was was a funky movie, but still, I mean, you, you know where I'm going. Yeah, yeah, I mean, War of the Roses. I mean, I, it, it's crazy because I mean, the best, 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 cosmic, you know, c- cosmic sex that you're ever going to have is going to be with that person that you can't tolerate. However, you can have really good sex with people that you can get married to, but sex is always going to change. I mean, you can't have sex with somebody for thirty years. And keep on digging it. I mean, you like it, and if it's good, it's good, and it delivers the good. And you probably go in phases, too. Oh, yeah, you go in and out of phases, just like the moon. <laughs> just like the phases of the moon. And you're right, and I, and I think that a lot of times people put a lot into the concept of sex. And, and I think in a marriage, I think there's a lot of pressure, quite honestly. I mean, I think there's pressure, and I want to talk about the sexual pressure here. When you're married and you are actually cognizant of other people's needs, right? You're cognizant of other people's needs. You know, okay, we haven't had sex in uh, five days. Let's just put it out there. Put five days out there. I know he's wanting sex, but I don't feel good. I don't feel good, whatever it is. Maybe you get the flu, whatever it is. So you go a full another week, and then you start feeling bad about it, right? And so you got to give in somehow. Now, there's some people out there that never give in. It's all about them. 
You know what I mean? Like, they get married, and once they get married, it's like, nope, I'm Stalin with the sex. I'm Hitler with the sex. You ain't getting any sex unless you're buying me diamond rings, unless you're doing this for me. No soup for you. No soup for you. (laughs) Or it's like, we're going to make some babies, huh? And unless you're giving me, unless we're making babies, we ain't having sex, because I'm not ovulating. So we're waiting two weeks till I ovulate to make sure this works out. And the husband's over there like going, oh, God. Oh, jeez. I got to wait two weeks. I got to wait two weeks. Here comes the internet porn. Yeah. Yes. That's in between. Internet porn is where you go when you want to get off, but you don't want to get another person involved. Like, it, you know, used to, you'd have to go to, like, a shady, you know, adult bookstore or, like, to, <laughs> to 7-Eleven, like, uh, after midnight. With the black bags. Yeah, yeah, with the black bags, you know, to... to so you actually to had the corner. To, to had, the corner. You actually had to put out some effort, you know, and... The magazine and, stand area. And hide the stash from the from the significant other. You know, now, I mean, it's on your smartphone. You know, you don't even have to, it's not even, you don't even have to do Get anything. on your smartphone, put on your earbuds, and go to the bathroom and lock the door. So I've been told. And go to the bathroom and lock the door. <laughs> so, so I've been told. I wouldn't know for, <clears throat> for sure. X and XX, I'm sure. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm anyway, sure. moving yeah, right along. I had to just put those earbuds in and go, and I'm really not feeling good i had that lasagna earlier i'm gonna be a while yeah mm-hmm. 10 minutes later you come out you pop out the door you're like you got you got the jazz hands going on with the smile <laughs> the <jazz. laughs> hey baby i got my jazz hands going i did wash my hands the, with antibacterial soap the jazz hands where did you get that from i don't know it just came out the, i know this is the stuff that's in my brain i was gonna say because i mean okay never mind never this mind. is the stuff that's in my on. brain right now the jazz hand brain jazz hands. and with the smile from ear to ear Glowing. Oh, Ashley, you never cease to amaze me. <laughs> Jazz hands. Jazz hands. So, okay. yeah, a lot of times it could be the sex that's missing. You know, they, they, you want to have the sex back. And, you know, if you're missing out on sex and you're looking out for it, having an affair, if the sex is good, is probably a reason why you're having the affair. And I know that that goes for a lot of reasons. I know a lot of men and a lot of women out there. Because I, I'm also a therapist, y'all, so you know that, is that I have a lot of clients that come in here that are constantly having affairs. Yes. Some of them have had affairs for over three or four years, the same affair. OK, and that gets interesting because no longer really, if you think about it, it doesn't seem like it's any any more about the sex. It seems like it's gone. It's graduated to another level. Right? Well, it has to. It has. to, And I think that's it, it. That's the elephant in the room, isn't it? Yes. Uh, you know, it's it's even men. Of course, you know, the stereotype is, you know, women, you know, fall in love and, you know, men are able to distinguish sex and love. and keep sex and love. That may, that's probably true to a certain extent. But uh, even for men, you know, at some point, if you keep having sex with the same person, you're going to have some emotions. You're going to develop some feelings for them. Yeah. And and so, duh, no wonder if you have an affair with somebody for X amount of time, you know, then, then yeah, you're going to fall in love with them. Well, yeah, I mean, I know some, I've actually, I've had a couple of clients that have come in here that are, uh, you know, they're sex addicts. And so I have a few sex addict clients, you know, and, and I understand the reason why people get addicted to this stuff. However, one of their big rules is to not have sex with somebody more than three times. <laughs> and the reason for that is because they said that after the third time you can start, and these are men, you can start having emotional feelings for the other person. I've, I've heard that rule. So yes. it's like after the third time, they say you can no longer compartmentalize it. It's no longer just fun or one night stand there. It goes to another emotional level. And so their whole deal is after the third time, they're out. Okay. And, and I always find that very interesting. I mean, the same thing about sex addicts, though, is they can make eye contact with a, a waitress in a bar and they'll make that their next conquest. They don't even know them. You know, they don't care at no. all. They don't care. And, and I've had friends that literally will be like, yeah, you saw so-and-so when we were walking into that place. I'll be like, yeah, they'll be like, I slept with her right after I saw you. But, I mean, th- listen to what you just said, Ashley. How dehumanizing. It is. Is, is, is it, It's, it's it, you know, and, and people, somebody listening to this, oh, that's misogynic. You know what I mean? It's just after women just for the conquest. Actually, I think it's more androgynic than misogynic. I mean, it's it's like these men, uh, you know, they, they hate themselves. Well, yeah. I mean, and I, and I think sex addiction is like any other addiction. I mean, it's like a lot of work. You yeah. know, think about it. It's like a lot of, think about if, think about if every day you had to go get a bag of Coke and if you didn't get a bag of Coke, you know, you were going to lose it. Okay. You're going to lose it. And you had to get that bag of Coke. So you have to still go to work and you still have to get up in the morning. You still have to go to your job. You still have to do this. You still have to do that. And at some point, you still got to make the call to the dealer, drive out to the dealer's house, pick up the bag of Coke, and come home. Now, take the bag of Coke and change that out from Coke 
to a man or a woman and having sex. So you got to go through your whole daily process, and on top of that, you got to find someone and have sex have, with them. Have to put on your game, yeah. Before you go to bed, and then you got to do it the next day. I mean, that's some freaking work. That's and and that's it's way harder than picking up a bag of drugs. I mean, that, that's that's hell on earth. I mean, if if your whole life revolves around that, and and you know you can't make it through the day. I mean, my gosh. And I know some people right now listening are like, man, I'm just having a small affair. <laughs> like, you know, I'm not trying to have sex with somebody new every day. And I understand if you're having an affair, and that's what we're talking about tonight is marriage and affairs. And if you think that you are with somebody that's having an affair, if you think your spouse is having an affair, or better yet, if you're having an affair, you know, I think a lot of times it's because you're missing out on something. You feel like you're missing out on something or you feel like you're missing something. Or something that you had in the beginning of your marriage has been changed. And you don't want it to be changed. Somebody's moved your cheese, and you've got to find somebody that can replace that position, or you're going to lose it. I think another reason why we have a tendency to have affairs is because, well, let's talk about that when we return. Because I think this is an interesting concept. I think- oh, no, that was called a tease there. Though for, the, for those of you who are sex addicts, they actually just teased you. It's all about the sex, baby. <laughs> all about the sex. So when we return, we talk about another reason why men and women choose to have affairs that's a little out of the ordinary and might be something that you want to think about. Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in we'll be back in two shakes. I'm ready to fly. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. The water's warm and there's a swim-up bar. Glass of perspective, anyone? Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Now, we're talking about marriage and affairs tonight. What goes on behind closed doors? You know, right before the break, we were talking about why people choose to have affairs. Why do men, why do women, why do they choose to have affairs? And I think the first reason why, and the obvious reason, is they're missing something from their spouse. That they're missing out on something. Like there's something that cannot be given to them from their spouse. Maybe it was something that was given and then taken away. Like the carrot over the head. Or maybe it was something that was never there. Because I think that sometimes people get married because they love the person. But maybe there's a few things that are missing. And I think that sex is a component of that. I think there can be other options too. Like once there's kids there, things can change as well. Maybe that spontaneity is gone. You know, maybe things have changed since the marriage, or maybe somebody married because of the emotional feeling, because they love them, but the sex was never good, or the attraction was maybe never there. And so they got married because there were things, or 80-90% of the person they loved, but it was missing out on something else. And maybe all the sex that they always found that was good, it was more like 10% of the relationship was good and 90 of it sucked. And so sometimes people make choices. I mean, sometimes people get married even when they're gay, To the opposite sex, because they love that person, but yet they're sexually not attracted to them. I've I've known people to do that, yes. They love them, and they they, they love, especially men. Uh, Also, especially if they're still in the closet. Oh, well, yeah. And they they love them, especially if they want to have kids. Yeah. So if the woman seems to be like she's going to be, they feel like she's going to be a good mother. You know, they probably have had sex, but it's not their favorite. You know what I mean? It's not something that goes down in the playbooks. Yeah. And they get married to this person and they have a kid and they get the kid out of the deal. And then all of a sudden, maybe the sex drive as far as having wanting to have sex with homegirl goes away. You know, and then what do you do? Are you going to be celibate the rest of your life because you have the kid? Are you going to be celibate and just not have sex and just... And, you know, some people, uh, you know, choose to do just that. But, uh, you know, I think most people, I mean, that's just asking too much. Yeah, that I mean, is asking they're, they're, they're human beings, after all. They got to get something. Yeah. I mean, you only can go into the bathroom with your XNXX on your freaking phone with your earbuds in only how many times a week? I mean, you know, how many times are you going to do it? Your again, whole life? Again, so I've been told. <laughs> so, I wouldn't know personally. Bill's validating the fact that he has absolutely no idea, but he's heard about it. Yes. He's, he's read about it on the internet pe- a couple pe- of times. People have told me. You know, I've heard it third and fourth hand, yes. And maybe fifth hand. And maybe fifth. And seven degrees of separation. Kevin Bacon could have told you about it. That, that, something like that, yeah. So why do we have an affair? So I think the next reason why people have an affair, and this is something that most people probably don't ever think about, and this is why this is being brought up right now on Perspectives Live here with Ashley Burgess, is that people have affairs because they want to live out a wild side. They want to have an affair because it offers this option of being wild, of being on the edge. I mean, think about it. You're like, 
fancy free and footloose and single and having a great time. And then eventually you meet somebody you love and you get married. And let's just say you have a bunch of kids, too. And you're living in a house in the suburbs or wherever. And you got your kids and you got your job and you're doing everything right. And all of a sudden one day you wake up and you're like, well, who the heck am I? And then you start wondering, you're like, man, is this the last person I'm ever going to have sex with? Oh, my God. And all of a sudden, you get that icy cold feeling running up and down your spine. <laughs> Knowing that that's true. Yeah. Unless you make some sort of drastic change or add something to your, I don't know, your portfolio, i.e. another person. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And so eventually, because you're so scared of the middle ages and of coming of age and, and not being able to talk or have anything that's crazy and on edge to talk about, you find it and you matriculate it in the form of an affair. I mean, it happens all the time. I have friends that come and talk to me all the time. These aren't even clients. These are friends. And they'll be like, man, life's been, you know, life's been good to me. And the marriage is good. And the three kids are just, they're just so great, you know. And I'm just so delighted to have these kids. But I am so bored. I am so bored. I can't see straight. I mean, am I going to just live my life like this all the time? Going to these little places in the suburbs, eating at Applebee's with the kids? That's gross. You don't Applebee's? Like, you know, no. <laughs> you don't like just, just something better than Applebee's. My goodness. Well, that's what they're doing. They're going to have an affair. So they're going to go to Applebee's on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with the family. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, they're going to be working late. And they're going to meet somebody. And they're going to have an affair. Well, t- take the family to someplace better than <laughs> Applebee's. For crying out loud. They're having an affair. You should be taking Actually, the, you know, to, to all the married people out there, if, if you're assuming <laughs> others taking you to Applebee's more than once a week, th- that's probably a sign. Applebee's. <laughs> Good grief. And no offense to anybody out there who either owns a franchise or works at it, but, you know. Let, you let's, have married it. No offense. <laughs> no you know, offense. Well, well, okay. Yeah. I well, hope they took offense. Oh, my God. I probably have offended. So, so send your cards and letters to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. In you care know. of Ashley Burgess, I guess, Ashley on this Burgess. situation. Yeah. Since Bill does no wrong. Now, think about it. Okay, so you take the kids out, you take the wife out, and then two days out of the week. And how does this normally matriculate? Let's figure out. How does this come to play? So you're at work. And for all those men out there, you're at work, and there's a nice little single young filly that shows up to work one day, and you start, you know, making your little jokes and your little comments, and, and she and you're you know, because you know she just wants your tip, but you know, so, yeah. so, so she fake flirts with you. Well, I'm talking about even at work. What if they're at work? Oh, oh, okay. What, what if they're at work? Ah. And you start hanging out, laughing, gif- giggling, and everything. Next thing you know, you're going out for drinks after work. What one thing leads to another. You're the distinguished older man. She's a younger girl. You end up having an affair. Now, where does it go? Actually, in all seriousness, no, Ashley, I mean, that happens a, a lot of times because, especially in this day and age, a lot of times you spend uh, more time with your coworkers than you do uh, with, with your own uh, family. Most people spend an average of 8 to 16 hours a day at w- work, right? Yeah. So 18, 8 to 16 hours a day at work. Most people, I think, average 12-hour days at this point in time. So you got to say you do 12 hours a day at work, Monday through Friday. If you're going to meet somebody anywhere, you're going to meet them at work. Yeah. That's and, the first place. And, you know, in this day and age where, it, you know, it's, it, I mean, the workplace is pretty much co-ed. I mean, there's probably certain industries where there, where it's, uh, you know, uh, still. You more know, men than women. One, one, or more, more women or than more men. more women than men. You know, but a lot of, you know, especially in the business world, it's, it's fairly co-ed. Ooh, and that's an interesting uh, idea, too, is that some people might be having affairs with somebody of the same sex. Okay, well, there, well, there you go. I, so, I, I mean, so, so some of the women out there that have been married, and, and you know, you know what I'm talking about, and you end up meeting a woman that you work with. Yeah. Maybe you realize you might have been missing out on something. You know. Yeah, you know, it's it's it, it, in in this day and age where uh, corporate America is becoming, you know, they're they're really doing a good job of uh, anti discrimination and and not discriminating against people. You know, people are are, are openly gay and lesbian. That's you know, true. Transgender, whatever. And, well, I think uh, so, also yeah. people are more open to be, to be experimental right now. Okay, well, there's you know, that. Yeah. Especially like, long work hours. Let's say you go out for drinks. You know what I'm saying? Because you're going to meet somebody at work, or you're going to meet somebody at a health club, or you're going to meet somebody walking from your car at work, or you're going to meet somebody at a bar with some friends, or it's going to be somebody you know. I mean, that's interesting, too, is that I know some people that are having affairs that hang out all the time together. They're friends. Friends with benefits. Both people in marriages, both people doing their thing, but they come together to have this affair. 
And it's not like all every week, you know what I'm saying? So you have to sit there and think about that. But for some people, the biggest reasons why they have an affair is because it allows for them to have their wild side. I mean, they're on the edge. They're having to hide. They're having to be under they're having to be under cloak and dagger to 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 meet up to hang out. I mean, have you ever run into? Because I've done this, Bill. Have you ever run into a friend of yours? You weren't planning on doing it, but you run into somebody you know at a hotel, leaving with some woman, or vice versa, a woman you know leaving with a random man, and they're married. I personally have not experienced that, but I I've, have. I've, I I know people who have experienced that. Oh, I have. And my my first response is always like, "Yeah, hey, how you doing?" So just to walk on, right? And, and, and it's always interesting because some people, some people actually ignore you, which to me is just the wrong way to go with it. I mean, you really just need to be like, hey, what's going on? I mean, you know, you, you, and you got to be careful. I mean, if you're having sex around in hotels really close to your house, you might want to think about that. That might be a change that you want to make if you're having an affair. I mean, if you want to walk on the, on the wild side a little bit, I get you, but you're kind of putting yourself in harm's way. And also the biggest thing, a sidebar about an affair is you don't want to make your spouse look like an idiot. Okay. Because sometimes affairs can be learning processes that people have to go through and they get over quickly and they feel bad about what they did and they let it go. And, 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 and real quick is that if you're having an affair, there's one thing that you have to remember is that you should not have to put this on your spouse later on if you feel bad about it. You need to be able to go to the grave knowing you had an affair Okay, because that's the only way you can really truly have an affair, because it's not fair if you go and do this bad stuff or in in parentheses, bad stuff. And then you go and tell your wife or your husband because you feel bad about it so that they can feel really bad about it. Like you have to be able to be a strong person. If you're strong enough and you're crazy enough to go have an affair, then you should be strong enough to be able to keep that all inside. So confession is not good for the soul. If you're confessing to your wife or husband about having an affair, it's probably not a good idea. I mean, you're only going to make them feel bad. I mean, you have to deal with this. I don't know. I mean, and we're coming to the end of the segment. Maybe we can get more into it. Uh, well, no, but you have segment. to but, deal. I mean, you have to deal with this. This is a personal deal. Well, I mean, what, what if what if you are genuinely sorry? But but you why know. do you have to say sorry? Why can't your actions speak louder than words and just not do it again? Uh, I don't know. I, so I, you got to bring them in on it. Like so, if you go and murder somebody, you're supposed to sit there and tell your you're supposed to tell your girlfriend tonight when you get home, I murdered somebody, and she's gonna sit there and freak out. Not only is she gonna call the cops on you, but and you're probably gonna go to prison. But the other thing is that she has to bear the witness of this murder. Like the whole thing is like the whole the whole the whole like you know screwing around behind somebody's back is is your deal. Yeah, I you, you pick know, it. I, I I think if you're genuinely sorry and you genuinely want to repair your your current marriage, uh, th- there's nothing wrong with confessing the affair and saying, "Look, I did it, and I realized I was wrong. I'm truly sorry. I want to repair our marriage. Let's take the steps to do it." If you're genuine about that, then I think uh, I, I've actually heard of cases where the marriage is stronger. You know, uh, coming out of it. But a lot of times, the reasons for that that it's stronger is because the spouse knew. That something was going on, okay? So knew probably about the affair. I'm talking about if if you would literally shock the crap out of your spouse by saying that you're having an affair, that's something you don't want to do. But if, if the other person is kind of clue to the fact that you haven't been around a lot, that something's going on, that you might be having an affair, yeah, confession might be good for the soul at that point in time. But again, I suggest the fact of if you're trying to clear your consciousness, why are you going to push and, and shuffle the dirt back onto them? I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but I think that there's two sides to it, you know? So anyway, when we return, we're going to talk about who... We have affairs with. Who do married people have affairs with? What kind of people? And what are some things to remember when dealing with this situation? Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Bird, will be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, tonight we're talking about marriage and affairs. What goes on behind closed doors? You know, right before the break, we were talking about why we have affairs, and now I'd like to talk about with whom do married people have affairs with? Hmm. Let's answer this question. I think the first thing is that some married people choose to have affairs with single people, people that are not married, people that are not in a relationship. And and I think there's reasons how that works and reasons it doesn't work. Just like some married couples, married people actually choose to have affairs with other married people. 
But when it comes to the single situation with the married couple, I think it's interesting how sometimes it can work and sometimes how it doesn't work and then somehow where conflict seems to ensue. So let's think about this. Married guy is uh, having an affair with a single woman. And at first it's very interesting. It's very edgy. It's very neat. But at what point in time is that single woman going to want more out of the relationship? I mean, very rarely... Can a woman have sex with a man repeatedly over and over again, be in emotional situations with them, laying in bed, doing all that stuff without having some sort of attachment? I mean, the very random one is the free spirit. You have those few and far between women that are single and free spirited and do not want to be held down by any man. Okay, and a lot of those women, though, are dating several men. So you're not the only one. Right. And I know one thing about most married men that are dating single women is they hope and pray that this woman's not dating anybody else because it's their mistress. It's their it's their fantasy. It's like an ownership type thing. Yeah, it's their fantasy. I mean, you don't want to think about the fantasy having sex with the, you know, with the firefighter down the street while you're gone. You know, the fantasy is there waiting for you while you're back at home with your wife. You know, and, well, and and I think it's it may also be a male ego thing. You know, it's like I'm the man. Yeah, you know, I can have an affair, but you're my mistress. I, you know, you're my side piece. Yes, you stick over there and you be quiet. You know, know your role. Yeah, take those shoes off. Be barefoot, but not pregnant. <laughs> not pregnant. But not pregnant. <laughs> but get, but the, get, not get pregnant. the kitchen and make me something. And you know, the single thing though is an interesting deal because that can last for a while, but it can totally backfire in your face. I mean, the single thing. The married woman or married man dating the opposite sex or or whatever, sing, it could be even the same sex single, okay? You got to be very careful. I mean, you have to kind of know what you're doing here. I mean, most of the time, people go into this stuff willy-nilly. You're not over there thinking every single side of this. You're not doing the CSI of affairs. You're over there thinking with something else. And, and, and by the time you get so over your head, you're stuck, and I had a friend of mine recently who had an affair with a, with a single woman, and uh, everything was going great for about a year, year and two months, and you know all of a sudden she got pregnant. Whoops! Oh yeah. Whoops! And he's been married for t- 10, 12, 14 years. Uh, you know, got two kids, and you know she got really mad and she wanted him to leave his wife, and he's like, I can't leave my wife. And, you know, there's no telling whatever he said, too, during the times where they were having sex, because I'm sure to some degree, if somebody thinks that you're going to leave your wife, you might have said something in the heat of the moment, you know? Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. I love you yeah. more than my wife. Yeah, I, I love you. you know, and I want you to I want to be with you. And, you know, we're, we're going to have a future together, you know. And I'm going to leave again, her. Again, so I've been told. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm going to leave her. <laughs> no comment. And I'm going to leave her for you. And some of those things have ended up very badly. And I've had friends that have actually had to come out to their wives and tell their wife everything because they knew that it was about to hit the fan. They, okay. they had to get out in front of it. Cause, you, you had cause, to. Because the worst thing is to find out, uh, like, you know, from the hospital or from the, the media or something like that. <laughs> from the media. Yeah. that's Yeah, from the media. That, that was a close one right there. Like, people literally go, and, and especially, what are you going to do about this kid? Okay, so now the girl's pregnant, wants you to leave the wife. Your wife knows nothing about the affair. You know that eventually this train wreck is going to happen. At what point, you don't know. You can sit there and give it some time. But in in several of these situations, literally the guy has to come to the wife and say, hey, by the way, I've been having this affair. Let me put this on the table for you. And that's pretty stressful. But they had to do it because then they go in on top of that, she's pregnant. Some wives stay with them and other ones don't. But it's interesting because you got to throw it all out there. And the single thing is an interesting thing, too, because most women that are not married and are single are looking to get married. There are only a few out there who are very free-spirited who do not want to be tied down. And so for the most part, when, when a married man meets a single woman that's not been married, you've got to be really careful. Like, what the heck do you think you're doing? I mean, you're like walking out there with a loaded gun. I mean, something is going to happen. Because you're not going to remember something, there's going to be some issue, or one day, your wife's going to go out to the mailbox and open up a package that's unmarked, and it's going to have the necklaces or lingerie that this woman wears with a note addressed to your wife. Or the the, the good old uh, standby, uh, uh, she, the, the wife is doing laundry, and there's 
a perfume she doesn't wear on his shirt collar or maybe a lipstick. You so could much. always you could always say that that was a strip bar. You could always say, honey, the guys had to go to the strip bar. You know how it is. They made me get a lap dance. It wasn't my fault. I mean, I only had the one. I'm repenting now. But still, that's going to plant that seed. Oh, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You get too much of that, problematic situation. Yeah. You know, body glitter all over your shirt's that, not the, good. The, the strip club uh, excuse or, or the, uh, honey, we went out to the sports bar, not even the strip club. But, you know, the, we went out to the bar. I got had a little too much to drink. Full, you know, got a little too touchy feely, you know. And now you got to go with strip bar on that. I one. mean, uh, that's yeah. I mean, those <laughs> you got to go strip bar, strip bar, strip those, bar. Those excuses only work once, maybe twice. Yeah, you're pushing it. Yeah. Or I ran into my old school teacher <laughs> again. So I've been told. I ran into my old teacher. She's like 65 years old. She gave me a hug. I mean, some lipstick and some makeup got on my shirt. My God, doesn't that old women's makeup? Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh, so, so, oh, huh. Okay, I, I need to remember. Let that write, wasn't a bad one, was let, it? let me write that down that here. Like, old woman makeup. <laughs> yeah. See? I'm going to have to save it. Put that in my arsenal. I know a lot of men pull, right now that are writing that, that one down. You're all writing that down, right? Yes. I'll keep offering there, these all night. There'll be a quiz at the end of the show. Tip your waitresses, guys. Tip your waitresses. So also, guess what? You can, um, women also get involved with single men, too. Now, this is interesting. Now, married women you're talking about now. Married women yes. getting involved with single men. Very interesting concept. Because it depends on the age of the man. It depends on the age of the man. You know, young men will develop a attachment quickly. Now, are you talking cougar here? You know, older woman with a younger man? or uh, You could be in your 30s and they could okay. be in their early 20s. Okay. You could be in your 40s and they could be in their late 20s. I mean, I think that would consume as a younger guy, right? We're not talking 18 here, you know? I mean, there's got to be some sort of, like, sex factor, right? Otherwise, you're just like, I mean, the kid's got no experience. Well, yeah, you, you know what MILF means, don't you? Duh. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, you know, so there's there's the... the but you don't have to yeah. be a MILF, though. I mean, you I mean, yeah. you could you could have kids. You don't have kids. You could be a leopard or a cougar or whatever you want to be. Leopard or cougar. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I, I think... How about, I, a, how about a, a jaguar, you know? So you could be in your thir- tw- 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever you are, having an affair with a single guy. And eventually there'll come a time that if the guy has emotional feelings for you, he's going to come after you. He's going to want to make this a permanent deal. I mean, some some guys are like boys, though. They're very intimidated by the situation. And other men that are older might like the fact that they don't actually have to get married and still get the cow. Okay? They don't have to buy the cow. They can buy the popsicles, and it's okay. Right? The, the, for all the women out there are thinking, yeah, Ashley, thanks. That was a good analogy. You know, good comparison to, to you know, a married woman and a cow. J- just remember, it was Ashley said it, not me. I'm not a, uh, you know, I Well, Applebee's still likes me. Women can like you, too. You know, I disassociate myself with the cow reference. So, no, but for all the women out there that, have, that are having affairs with single men or have thought about, thought about having affairs with single men, it can be very enticing. They're very young. They're very interesting. They probably have a long stamina. Mystery. They probably have a long stamina. Mm-hmm. Stamina. They're not taking boner pills. They can keep it up. They can <laughs> yeah, keep it going. Say, they, they got long something. You, know? well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. They can have it all. They can have the whole package. But a lot of it is the mystery. You know? And, and But also, let's flip to the whole side of being married and having sex with other married people. Because that's interesting. Because when you have when you have relations with single people that are not married, that single person has nobody to go home to. Okay, so when you leave to go home to your spouse, that person's alone. Okay, think about it. They're alone. So what do they think about? They think about you. Okay, or they go out and they they club and they go party and they act out because they feel they feel out of control because now you are in the control factor right now. You are in the power position. Because you left and you went home to your spouse. And so think about it. And I think it's interesting how a lot of married couple, a lot of married people that are having affairs with single people have a tendency of wanting to power play that single person to the point of, what are you doing tonight? Where are you going? What are you doing? And they're like, I don't know. I'm going to go with my friends. Well, what friends are you going out with? And normally the single person's response is, it doesn't matter because you're married. I'm not the one that's married here. I'm not the one going back to my spouse. Okay, so it becomes this whole argument. And if you're willing to have that argument every single time you sleep with that person, God bless you. But that argument's going to be there. That argument of where you're going and what you're doing. And it might not begin in the very beginning because people like to start off being cool. I'm a cool kid. 
I'm a cool kid and this is cool and this is I'm used to this. I'm used to having sex with merry women or I'm used to having sex with merry men and, and this is all great. And then eventually, however many weeks into this affair, it's going to come down. Oh, you have to go home to your wife. You, why can't you stay the night? I, I, I don't understand why you can't stay the night. I mean, you never stay the night. I mean, I don't know why you can't. Well, I can't because I'm married. I can't because I have kids and I'm married. And then you have that whole cycle of events that take place. And once that starts, it doesn't get any better. Okay, it doesn't get any better because all of a sudden what's happened is they've found something that they want. And they like feeling need, needed. And they like having somebody around. So you fulfill all of those things for them. And so by you going home back to your wife or you going home back to your husband, this presents a problem. And eventually they're either going to get even or they're going to get angry or they're going to get you. They're going to have you for your own. And we all know that one thing about affairs, and that's normally any time that a marriage is broken up by an affair, usually the person that was having the affair does not get with the person that they were having an affair with. So if you're married and you're having an affair and that person that you're having an affair with breaks up your marriage somehow, you're not going to end up marrying them. So is it worth it? I mean, that's a good question. So when we return, we're going to be talking about when married people actually have um, romantic affairs with other married people. Stay tuned because Perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. We'll be back in two shakes. I can lift you up. I can show you what you want to see and take you where you want to be. Get in here and give us your perspective. We're listening. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. You know, tonight we're talking about marriage and affairs. What happens and what goes on behind closed doors? It's always an interesting question I have. You know, so we've been talking about married couples that have affair. One of the, one of the spouses has an affair with a single person and how that folds out. Now let's talk about married people having affairs with other married people. And how does that work? And I think that's always an interesting dichotomy because you have two people that come together in an affair, both being married to other people, and they come together. And a lot of times that's based on mystery for sure because they're not married to each other, and and the mystery is worn out on their marriage. And so those two together that come together in an affair, it's like the mystery is all new again. It's like starting all over and not having to deal with the kids at home. And sometimes at the beginning, these can work, but a lot of times these become fantasies very quickly, very quickly. Because on the single side, when a married person is dating a single person, having an affair, my bad, with a single person, the single person has to deal with the reality every time the married person leaves to go to their spouse, okay? When two married people come together to have an affair, both married people leave at the same time to go back to their spouses, Meaning that they're not thinking when they're going back to their spouses, they're too much dealing with the fact that they got to go back to their spouses. And the weird thing about that is that most of the time, those married people are thinking about the other person while they're with their spouse. But they're never really spending quality time with their spouse. And when they go back to be with the other person they're having an affair with, they're too busy worrying that their spouse is going to find and out. Here's the nightmare scenario uh, uh, you know, to try to keep the, the, the current spouse happy. Uh, you, you know, you, you're being intimate with him and you use the wrong name. Oh, Ooh. that would be bad. Do you think that could really Ooh. happen, though? I do think that happens. Oh, my God. Or, or uh, you're, you're dreaming. And you, oh, you, no. You, uh, you and you yell at name. the name? Yeah. Oh like you're sleeping and you you just you know you're having a dream and you just say the wrong name. Ooh! For all you sleep talkers right. out there, you better be getting a gag ball, and putting yes. it on tonight. Yes, yes, yes. Hiding it, hiding it. Unless you want to get into some crazy sex, you better hide that real quick. But you better tape up that mouth because that's true. You could say the wrong name. Oh my god! Ooh. That's why uh, you always want to date somebody with the same name as your spouse. <laughs> ruh, ruh, raggy. The same name with your spouse. Yeah. Isn't that messed up? I know people that have done that before. Go out to find another woman with the same name as their spouse so they don't ruin that up. That's hard work. You know how hard yes. that is to go find? And, and <laughs> you got to put an ad out there that's, in the newspaper. That's, that's way too much work. you got to put an ad out there. Way too much work. you got to put an ad in the newspaper for that. Yeah. Under some assumed name. Craigslist. Or, I don't know, go on Ashley Madison or something like that and yeah. figure it out. So, yeah, so you got the married and the married thing. And a lot of times that's even that's very mysterious, too. I mean, the single and married thing is mysterious because you don't know what the single person's doing when you're gone with your spouse. And you want to know. And you want to know where they've been and what they're doing. On the flip side, the married and the married, it's like having a fantasy of what if you were married to that guy or what if you were married to that woman. 
you know, oh, my marriage would be so much better. And I've done a lot of couples therapy where we deal with the fact where somebody's had an affair outside the marriage with a person that is married. They met at work, okay, maybe even shared offices. And they got very close, not only emotional, but sexually. And having to deal with that because you're seeing that person a lot, a lot. And all of a sudden you're starting to see these things and characteristics that you're, you're comparing your spouse to this person. It's like, it's the funny scenario how on this planet earth, it seems like nobody can actually love two people at the same time because instead of loving two people at the same time, you're comparing the one to the other and getting rid of one because one doesn't, you know, stand the test of time. One doesn't have, well, that one's only got 85% and this one's 92. So I'm going to keep this person. They got an A, this person's got a B. So when they're getting into affairs, when married people have affairs, what do they need to really think about? I think the biggest thing is that a lot of times people get into affairs with people that have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. And and I know that a lot of people listening tonight have had a friend that got into an affair with somebody, with somebody that had nothing to lose. And after and throughout that affair, their entire life and marriage got ruined, ruined. Everything came out. Because that person that they had the affair with had absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain by having sex and by having an affair with that married person. Think about it. I mean, the thing is is that you either have something to lose or you have to be with somebody that has just as much to lose as you do. And that's key. Because if somebody has just as much to lose as you do, they're not going to stick you out there to fry. Unless it's some sort of emotional situation or some sort of pregnancy or what have you. But for the most part, if everybody has the same amount to lose, nobody's going to be out there to fry. And I remember telling like even some of my relatives at one point who I knew were having an affair years ago. And I said, the problem that you have is that you keep going after women that have absolutely nothing to lose and all to gain. So they're definitely going to use that against you. I mean, they're definitely going to go after that. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, you have to really think about it, but a lot of people don't use their noggin to think about this stuff because you go into it willy-nilly because they think you're lacking something. Are you really lacking something? Do you know what you're lacking? Last but not least, let's just think about this. What happens if you get caught? But but better yet, what happens if you fall in love with this person? Oh, Getting caught is one thing. I'm telling you, Ashley, uh, uh, people who are in the uh, romance novel or chick flick uh, or soap opera industry, they're just loving you right now. thats I mean, this is their bread and butter. What happens if you get caught? Yes. I mean, are you willing to get caught for this? Is the sex that good? Is it absolutely earth-shattering? God, it was an earthquake. Oh, my God. I can, I, I, it's, it, I'm, 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 I'm living in it here. I'm seeing the white light. Is it worth that? To lose everything, but better yet, what if in the process of cheating, you fall in love with the person you're cheating with? Wow. Ooh. There's a couple of soap opera Wow. Uh, I mean, know, that's crazy. There. Yeah. Think about it. I mean, I know people that have fallen in love with the person they're having an affair with, and they hate going home. They hate going home to their spouse, yeah. and they got their kids, and they, got the, and, they, and they feel bad internally because now they're in love with so-and-so, and they can't be with so-and-so all the time. And so this becomes this whole divided thing. Like, you can't be... I don't believe that you can be honest with yourself and be freaking completely divided. Like, I don't think that you can divide your heart up like that and and, and literally go back to your house and dread going home because you've fallen in love with your mistress. I mean, at what point in time... I mean, I think I think getting caught is bad. Yeah. Because you're getting caught. I mean, nobody likes to get caught. I mean, you would rather end it yourself than get caught, right? I mean, because that's just like, that's poor form. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to have an affair, you know, at least have good form about it. At least have good form and a little yeah. respect. I mean, honestly, if, if you're having an affair, and I'm sure people that are listening, there are some people out there that are. If you are having an affair, have some respect for your spouse. Don't do it out in the open. Don't be doing it at the bar. Don't be doing, don't be talking about it in front of people. Have some respect, okay? The second thing is ask yourself, do I, am, am, am I, do I feel good about myself having this affair? Do I feel good about myself? Also ask yourself, what am I getting out of this affair? What am I absolutely honestly getting out of this? And I know that some of y'all in your minds are thinking about it right now, and the thing that you're getting out of it is what? It's just like walking on the wild side. And I understand that sometimes life can seem like it's all dictated, that the road has already been paved, 
that you only have a few good sex years left in your life, and and you're stressed out, and, and you don't want you don't want to turn fifty, you don't want to turn sixty, you don't want to do this. You're not prepared to grow older. You're not prepared to turn forty. Whatever the age is, you're not prepared. And so you seek, you know, having an affair with somebody to make your life more interesting. And I understand that because you know what? For all purposes on this show right now, you only live once in this particular body, probably. So if that's the case, you know, when the time comes, will you be able to sit there and say, I did everything that I wanted to do? Or instead, are you going to say, man, I really held myself back? I would have rather had this. I would have at least liked to experience that. I wish I could have been given that option to do this. I mean, the last thing you want to do is regret. Okay? And I'm not over here proponing all of affairs right now, even though it might sound like that for a degree. But what I am saying is that you have to be strict with yourself. You have to be able to look at yourself in the mirror and know that what you're doing is right by you. And, and you know, one of the biggest things, though, is what happens if you fall in love with that person. And and I think you have to really think about that. And, and if that's the case, and if you're teetering on feeling like you're falling in love with the person that you're having an affair with, think about the amount of energy that you're expect that you're giving to this affair. Think about the amount of energy that you're actually dedicating to your marriage. Is there anywhere near that amount to the marriage? Are you have you basically dropped the marriage and run off with this affair? I mean, you have to be honest because the affair right now for the most part, is it's probably in its infancy stage. At the infancy stage, everything looks really good. Everything looks really interesting, and everything has promise, and everything has mystery and energy and intrigue, and it's very cool. It's the whole movie fantasy. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, the woman's waiting for you in the lingerie. You know what I mean? The lingerie that I bought her, she's waiting over there. I'm going to go, you know, pinch hit this and then head back home, right? Yep. I mean, that's, that's the dream, right? Yep. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, a little bit bada of Bada boom, bada bing. And, how you, know, you doing? How you doing, yeah. No, no, no how you doing? <laughs> so, I mean, you have to think about that, but also think about what was the hook that got you into this affair? What's the hook? Think about that. Honestly, think about it, because a lot of times we go in this blindsided. You, you know, you don't think about that, and you fall in love, but is it love, or are you hooked for something else? Because there could be a possibility that it's all based on predicated on something that might not actually be love. It could be the fantasy. It could be the fantasy that this person's always there for you, always seems to be happy when you come home. Always seems to show you all the love and shower you with all the sex that you want. But ask yourself, is this real? I mean, because love has to be real. And you have to remember that if you were married to this person for X, Y, Z years, would this still be applicable? Or would it still be the same as your marriage? I mean, you have to go into something like this realizing that you have to plan for whatever ending. And last but not least, words to live by. Are you planning? Are you planning this? Do you see maybe an end time to this relationship? If not, are you allowing this other person to plan your life out for you? I mean, think about it. If you are having an affair, you know of anybody that is having an affair, they have to really be thinking about the fact, do they know where this is going Or is this just open-ended? And and I think if you're out there because you're missing something in your marriage, there needs to be some sort of caliber of time schedule based on how long this is going to last and derive. But also, I mean, really, you have to sit there and realize if it's the wild side that you want, figure it out. But I think eventually sowing oats is a good thing. But also, you don't want to lose sight and you don't want to lose what you have. So I think tonight it's a big deal is to sit there and think, okay, I don't want to take a gamble with my life. I want to have some fun. Where is the middle course on here? How can I have a life that I'm proud of having and having a little bit of spontaneity, having a little wild side? But at the same time, you got to think about it. Is it all worth? Is it worth losing what you currently have? That's for you to answer. we got a great show for you next week. And Perspectives, your host, me, Ashley Burgess, will be back in. Be back this time in three shakes.